Hey YouTube, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. I wanted to give you some information on snake bites. I wanted to give you some information about what to look for, some of the signs and symptoms, and some of the treatment that we're going to provide for our patients. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there when it comes to treating snake bites. Anything from cutting the wound open and trying to suck the poison out to applying a tourniquet. Now both of these I, I don't recommend and I'm going to talk to you about why I don't recommend one is sucking out the blood and number two is doing a tourniquet. I think both of these can do more harm than good. With sucking the wound out, one is you're probably not going to get the poison out. And if you get the poison in your mouth, it can cause trouble too. But you're just going to create more problems for possible infection. When you apply the tourniquet, if it is a venomous bite, then you're going to keep all the poison centralized in that location. And the body won't be able to fight itself. Now we do know that tourniquets are dangerous. You know We don't want to put them on us unnecessarily. So putting a tourniquet on could cost someone their limb when the bite even wasn't venomous bite. There are a couple of different companies who make extractors for this type of venom bites where it's like a suction cup and a plunger. You put it over the bite, you pull back, and it's supposed to pull the venom out. You can try this. It's not going to hurt anything. You may actually do get the venom to come back out of the body. But I don't recommend putting your mouth to the wound and sucking it out. I don't recommend cutting it more. 70% of snake bites are done by non-venomous snakes. Remember that 50% of venomous snake bites are dry bites, meaning the poison did not get injected into the body. This could be either that the snake for some reason didn't inject the poison or if the poison came out prior to the bite. We're going to splint the injury as if it were a fracture and then start covering up with blankets or a mylar blanket or just real heavy blankets, whatever you have, to try to keep them warm, uh, to try to prevent shock. There's a couple different groups of poisonous snakes that we can talk about. We have rattlesnakes, we have cottonmouth, uh, copperheads, and coral snakes. With rattlesnakes, their bites are immediately painful, and we're going to talk about some of the symptoms. I'm going to list them on the screen here as I read them off to you. Uh, the body as a whole, you can get swelling, you're going to get pain at the site, weakness, paralysis, tingling, numbness, you'll get increased thirst, even tiredness, your body can go into shock, meaning that your blood pressure is going to may start to drop, your heart rate is going to go up, your respiratory rate is going to go up. Um, they can have some difficulty breathing. Uh, they can have uh, blurred vision, even eyelid drooping. You're going to start to get some discoloration and some breaking down of the tissue around the bite. You can also get nausea vomiting. With cotton mouth and copperheads, the bite is going to be immediately be painful. There again, some of the signs and symptoms we're going to have. We're going to have swelling, pain at the sight, thirst, weakness, tiredness. Your body's going to go into shock again. Uh, tingling, numbness, difficulty breathing. You're going to get some discoloration around the skin. The skin tissue is going to start to break down. Nausea, vomiting. Now with coral snakes, their bite may not be immediately painful. And this can be kind of tricky because these signs and symptoms may not come for a few hours later. And these coral snake bites that are poisonous can be extremely deadly. We're going to get pain at the site. There again, this can become a few hours later. Swelling, drowsiness, weakness, slurred speech, headache. Uh, your body could possibly go into shock. Paralysis, numbness of the affected area. And then you can get some difficulty breathing, difficulty swallowing. You get blurred vision, uh, swollen tongue or throat, eyelid drooping. You can get excessive drooling. You're going to get some discoloration at the skin, discoloration around the side of the tissue, nausea, vomiting, you get stomach and abdominal pain, and there again you can even have a seizure with these coral snake bites. I think the most important thing to take away from this video is to have the patient remain calm. Remember that the body is a wonderful thing. It tries to heal itself. So although ultimately this person probably does need the anti-venom if this was actually a, a venom strike, the body will try to heal itself. The body will try to take care of itself the best it can. So let the body try to react to the venom and let the body take care of itself.